Okay, hello. I hope that last mini project went well. Now is the time where we start getting a little fancier with our code. So we're gonna start actually interacting with our page. Up until now, we've been using document.getElementById and we've been getting, getting the ID of every single element, which means up until now, all of our HTML needs to have an ID. And that is just honestly, no way to live your life. What if you just wanted to select the small element or just a link or just a particular link? What if you wanted to select something by its class? What if you wanted to select multiple elements that all have something in common? We can do that with JavaScript. Now this is more modern JavaScript and you won't see this in older JavaScript and that's actually okay because this is super well supported. So for this, you're going to need to know a little bit about CSS. So in the world of CSS, as a quick little crash course, you have, this is a class and then you've got an ID declaration and then you've got an element declaration and that's just about it. And then we can get fancier with it too. So we can do like class and then a child element with the ID of ID and then a child element of a link and we can style it that way. And so dot means class, hashtag means ID. And if neither of them are presented, then we are assuming that it's an element. So that is a quick, quick crash course on CSS selectors. That is the fastest I think I've ever explained it. But hey, let's not learn about CSS. Let's actually get into some of this nitty gritty stuff because this is going to be pretty fun. So we have this new thing called a query selector. So let's go ahead and write a query selector and let's just get the title. So let's do var title and let's make that just a tad bigger here. Var title and we want to get it by its ID. Okay, well we could do that. So we could do document.get element by ID title and then title.inner text is equal to changed. By default it's going to say hello world, this is the title and it's going to have a child element in there, a small element and it just says change me too. If we load this up, it just says changed. Okay, so we know that this is working, but we don't want to get it by its ID. So let's give this a class. Class is equal to title. And let's go ahead and just ditch this ID because we've been using it so often. And honestly, not many elements have IDs. So let's go ahead and try to get this by its title or its class called title. So we do query selector dot title, just like it's CSS. So we're gonna grab the first one. Now query selector is only going to grab the first one. So if there's another element in here with a class name of title, it's only going to grab the first one it finds moving from top to bottom. So make sure that whatever class you're using is unique. In this case, it would be a better practice to use an ID rather than a class, but let's go ahead and give this a shot anyways. Changed using a class. Bam, changed using a class. And if we do this title, we can actually see as soon as I type it in here, it's selecting that entire node. Okay, I have to comment that out because I want to now select the small. How do I select an element inside of an element? Well, if I wanted to, I could do var small is equal to document dot query selector and just type small. And this will get it. This will get it by its element name. So we could do something along the lines of on line 21, small dot inner text is equal to, wow, I'm tiny text. And there it is. Wow, I'm tiny text, all caps. But it didn't change the hello world. This is the title. It just got this one. So that's pretty cool. We could do that too. Now, what if somewhere down the road, we have a large class, maybe it's a, a card of some sort, and we want to get a particular element inside of it. So let's just pretend that this is much more complex and much bigger. So we've got a class called title, and we want to get just the small element. Remember, query selector is going to get the first small that it finds. So let's actually create an example here. Small, this one is first. And watch, change me too is not going to change, but this one first will change. And there it is. It selected the first small. It didn't select the second one. It just got the first one. What if we wanted to get this one? Well, currently we don't have a way to do that. We don't know how to get the second one. So let's go ahead and grab just the second one. So what we can do here is let's comment this out and let's create another one in here called, eh, we'll also call it small. Var small is equal to, and then we can do title dot query selector small. And so instead of getting the entire document, 
our document object model and looking through it, we're just looking through the title. And we're saying, hey, anything that's inside that title with an element called small, grab the first one there. So now we can do small dot inner text is equal to wow, 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 wow. And bam, look at that. First one is unchanged. The second one is changed. Awesome. So now we know how to select an element by its class and we know how to select an element uh, that is a child element of that original element. In this case, we selected the child element of the H1. Okay, I'm gonna comment those out and let's go ahead and change just the link text. We can do that as well. We've already seen this, but hey, a few more examples never hurts. So var a for, I guess, anchor is equal to document dot query selector a and let's do a dot inner text is equal to coding for everybody dot com. Bam, coding for everybody dot com. So there's that example as well. That's just selecting an element based on the actual element name, not a class, not an ID, just the element name. Now that's all well and good. Let's go ahead and comment this out. And also this one and also this one. Let's go ahead and create an instance where we need to select multiple classes. So let's create uh, an unordered list, a boring unordered list, nothing fancy in here. And let's do li number one, li. And we're gonna go over and over and over. So in here, I have an unordered list with seven elements in it. So let's go ahead, number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got list items in here. What if I wanted to select all of these list items? How am I gonna do that? Well, what I could do is, let's open up a new script tag here. And you can actually see that VS Code is going to try to auto-complete this for me. So let's do var li's, li. I wish I could do an apostrophe there, but li's is equal to document, then watch this, query selector all. And we can give it the exact same thing. In this case, we just want to select an element. Now we're not going to do anything with this yet, but let's take a look. And let's get it real small. And then let's just refresh and da 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 da. Allies. This is going to look somewhat familiar to you by now. Let's actually make this bigger. Drum roll, please. It's a node list, but hey, when we look into it, doesn't this look a lot like an array? And so once we learn how to loop through an array, we can learn how to loop through a node list pretty easily. And it comes with all sorts of stuff in here too. Okay, so in our list of LIs, we have indexes zero through six, or in human terms, one through seven. Let's grab the first one and just change that text. How would we do that because it's an array with an index? Well, we know it's basically an array, it looks like an array. We could grab the first one, there we go. We can actually see that it's highlighted it in my document object model. And then I could do inner text, and I could change that to anything I want, anything I want. And look at that, it worked. So now we can change any of these. So let's say we wanted number five. Well, what number is that? Remember, computers start counting at number zero, not number one, so we want to go back one. Four, it selected the right one, dot inner HTML is equal to A H R E F. Hi, 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 hi. Bam! Now there's a link inside of here. And actually, if we right click and inspect it, you'll see that we have added a link to our document object model. That's brand new. That was not there in the source code. We added that dynamically. Okay, now that's all fun and games, but what if we wanted to get the value of a text field or a text input? So let's go ahead and create a new example in here. <laughs> We're gonna create an input. I'm going to just give it a type of text style. Let's make it big. Padding 30 pixels font size, 30 pixels. So, you know, fairly big. Let's give it a class name. Something that we are sort of familiar with if you've ever worked with Bootstrap called form control. Now this is not going to look nice, but it will have a class name. Okay, cool. We've got big text area here. Pretty easy. What if we want to get that value? Well, let's give this a default value. Default value of hello world, blah, blah, blah because it doesn't really matter what it is, we just want to get this value. Let's go ahead and create a query selector where we can actually get that value. So we have a new script in here, 
and let's call this variable input is equal to document dot query selector and we just want to select the first one because there's only one in here dot form control and that will give us our first one then we could do console dot log input and then simply the value and that's just dot value so let's go ahead and refresh our page and we can see hello world blah 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 and that's exactly what's in here and if we change this to hi 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 it changes in there as well all right so as a quick little refresh of everything we just went over to grab an element by its title and only one of them we use query selector and you can use css selectors as you normally would in css and then we just change the inner text no big deal then we said ah actually let's just get the small but that was the first one and we have two on the page so it just changed the first one then we said let's create another variable called small but instead of querying through the document we queried through just the title which we have already selected up here that's a node that does exist and so there's a title here and we're going to say within that title look for a small element and inside of that just change the inner text to wow 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 and then we said hey you know what uh, we just want to grab a regular link just the first one on the page and change the inner text to coding for everybody.com no big deal and then we said oh actually let's grab multiple elements let's grab all the allies it created an array like object called a node list and it grabbed every ally all seven of them and then we were actually able to change it by just selecting one at a time with its proper index number and lastly we have an input field here with a class of form control which we grabbed there was only one so we used query selector not query selector all like we did with the allies this grabbed all seven this just grabs the first one it can find on a page and then we console logged the input value so whatever the value was on the page we were actually able to get that and console log it so now we're starting to build some interactivity between the user and us now your biggest takeaway is honestly this one here it's probably the simplest one so what i would like you to do as a quick little task a little bit of homework give this a shot create a new input and then use document.query selector to grab that input maybe use a class use an id maybe just use the regular element name called input give it a default value and then console log that default value if you can do that we are good to go on to the next lesson because we are going to start working with a lot more events and this is where our javascript gets a lot more dynamic and it becomes a lot more fun not that this wasn't fun at all but we really had to get through a lot of the fundamentals in order to get here but now we can start creating pages that have event listeners we can trigger events when someone clicks a button or submits a form or types into a text field so go ahead give us a shot don't forget if you have questions leave it down below for me i'm always happy to help otherwise if you are feeling confident in this lesson let's head on over to the next one where we are going to learn about events